organised activities until people like Mr Kelly, as I have always known him, um, came along, Mac Reeves, some of the incredible movers and shakers, if you like, of the equestrian sports. Um, and back in the day, way before the Melbourne Olympics in uh, 56, or 56, 54, um, there was a movement, but it wasn't a very strong movement uh, of equestrian activities in Victoria. And, and it was people like old Mr Kelly and, and Mac Greaves, etc., who really got together some committees and um, moved us on from the traditional hunting and some of the other more traditional events to move into these Olympic disciplines that are so strong today. It is amazing when you think back that only, you know, 60 years ago, show jumping didn't really exist. It was um, basically in the 50s that show jumping sort of took off as, as what we see it today. And I think it had its beginnings in the modern pentathlon when um, the uh, athletes would, would do a number of activities and they included a equestrian activity of rider over obstacles or over fences. And that was very much the beginnings of what we now know as the show jumping. Well, you've got a much bigger memory than me, mate, but you're a fair bit older too. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm learning a few things as you're talking. You can't get older without getting wiser, Brett. You'd hope so. You'd hope so. But uh, New set of gear out here this year, Steve. You, we saw it briefly last year, but uh, unfortunately weather sort of limited the show jumping at the show. But um, for many years we had a different set of show jumps here at Melbourne Royal, the Melbourne Show Jumping Club gear, but Horizon Show Jumps have built this beautiful gear and uh, fantastic to see it out here in the main arena. But it's a very different look to what it's been in the past sort of 15 to 20 years. I think it's spectacular. No other word for it, it's amazing. And um, those people who watched our last class, we've got our horseshoe fence here, and I'll walk over towards it, um, which caused a lot of trouble in our last class. Not so much, we had a couple of rails, but uh, horses were just cantering up to it and not quite sure what to expect. Um, and th these types of horse, these types of fences are fairly common in the eventing world. We see these a lot, particularly down they had one very similar to this at Melbourne three-day event a couple of years ago. Um, and the horses canter into this fence. It's, it's a very imposing looking fence. It's not your traditional, if we look at some of these other fences, they're very traditional. We have a wing and in the middle we have what we call an infill and a couple of rails or round poles. Whereas this is um, a self-standing, um, imposing type fence. And as you can see, if I stand alongside, these, these rails are at a quite a height. I'm not 100% sure, Brett, you'll know exactly how high these are, this class. Yeah, it should be 135, I'd say, for the Group B horses, so 135 to 140. Yeah, so it's not, this particular fence, because it's a bit spooky, doesn't appear to be as tall as some of the others, but I think it's asking questions of horse and rider in a far different way. It's asking a boldness question, and this rail doesn't take a great deal for it to roll off its cuffs and incur a penalty. And that's part of the safety of the show jumping and, and the technical aspect of show jumping compared to cross country and eventing. The cross country fences don't fall down, the horse can actually hit them fairly hard, where in show jumping we need them to be very careful. Like, careful is a big word we use in show jumping because the, the slightest tap on one of these poles, down comes a rail and that's four jumping penalties and puts you out of the money round. Yes, it's an in interesting how the sport continues to evolve. Now this fence here, as you can see on me, I'm a metre 78 or whatever. Um, it's quite high on up to my shoulder. But this is what we call an oxer and the rear rail on this oxer has what we call a breakaway cup, Brett, and further what you were just saying in terms of safety and the way that the sport um, can evolve over periods of time to ensure horse and rider safety. If a horse or rider was to come down on this back rail with any significant force, this breakaway cup will actually uh, disengage and allow the fence to fall away 
without hopefully injuring horse or rider. And the poles themselves, Steve, just lift one up. It's, you can sort of lift them with two fingers. They are very light. I do go to gym a fair bit, uh, Brett, but uh, yeah, they're reasonably light. Yeah, you look like you go to the gym. <laughs> so um, further to the conversation in relation to these particular uh, new jumps, if we have a look down here at the popcorn ticket stand, the amount of time and effort that's been involved in this is extraordinary. So. Number one yeah, well, Liam, one Liam and his wife at Horizon Show Jumps who built all this gear, and this is their hire set. They hired out, hire it out to different shows number around two, Victoria. Two, They're just fantastic. They, they get their inspiration from shows in Europe and try and bring that the new fancy sort of gear back here to Australia and build it themselves. And it's just great to see that, you know, people, they're not competitors, but they're still passionate about the sport. And it's fantastic to see what they've done and produced here for Melbourne Royal. That's right. Well, I better get out of my ticket box here, Brett, because our first horse is on the course. So I'll discreetly make my way off the arena. Well, you cut a mean figure, mate. So, uh Discreet isn't uh, what I'd call the, the gate you've got, but uh, Angela Dobbin, our first rider on course in the Colin R. Kelly Memorial Jumping Contest. And this time, Angela riding Gabrielle MVNZ. safely over the horseshoe, Angela Dobbin continuing her great run here at the Melbourne Royal Show in 2023. She won the Alice Laidlaw last night, now jumping clear in the first round of the Colin Kelly Memorial Jumping Contest. Rebecca Jenkins will be our next rider on course. Becky grew up here in Victoria, moved to Queensland and married Stewie Jenkins now calls Queensland home and she's riding at Denison Park style. Steve, you'd remember watching Becky here as a very young girl at four years old. I think she competed at Melbourne Royal for the first time. Fortunately, Brett, I think I do remember when she was about four years old. Um, an extraordinary uh, exhibitor of both show jumping horses and of course hacks. And she's competed in the, uh, the Gary Owen equestrian turnout on a number of occasions as well over the years.
Oh, the cream does rise to the top. Becky Jenkins, Denison Park style, clear jumping and a clear time. So two horses gone, two clear rounds through to the jump off in the Colin Kelly Memorial Jumping Contest from Denison up in East Gippsland. It's Andrew Lamb, our next rider on course and he's riding Oaks Everred. Bad luck there for Andrew Lamb. The two rails coming down for eight jumping penalties. Well, Steve, that just showed there what we were talking about with the safety of the show jumps, the breakaway cups falling away. So Oaks Everett and Andrew Lamb, even though they had a bit of a whoopsie there at fence number nine, everyone fairly safe. Absolutely. They live to fight another day and um, the breakaway cups are a reasonably... Uh, relatively new addition to our show jumping course building. Uh, I think they've been around 10 or so years now and um, in, in various uh, uh, formats, but um, it's great to see them now virtually used universally. So the next combination, on course, a man that's been coming to uh, Melbourne Royal for, I'd have to stay 40 or 45 years, it's Russell Johnson. He's riding Kantara. Kantara owned by the McCann family down in Geelong. And Russell represented Australia at the Atlanta Olympics back in 1996 on a horse called Southern Contrast.
very disappointing there for Russell Johnson and Kantara. The horseshoe does it again, 93-27 the time. Just the four jumping penalties for the refusal and 10 time penalties, so a total of 14. Steve, the horseshoe, a few problems. It's fast becoming our boogie fence of, uh, of this year's show, I think, Brett. And it's one that these riders seldom, most of these horses are extraordinarily trained, but it's one that these riders wouldn't have at home and therefore couldn't school. So we welcome into the arena from Drysdale in Victoria. It's Tilly Fair. And Tilly, one of the best young riders in Australia at the moment. Won the big young rider class up at Tamworth World Cup just four weeks ago. She's riding Oaks Constantino. Safely over the last 82.60, the time taken, 84 seconds, the time allowed on course, unfortunately. The two rails down, eight jumping penalties for Oaks Constantino and at Tilly Fair. The next combination in the ring, place getter here already at Royal Melbourne Show, a young lady from the Oaks in New South Wales. It's Jess Stalling, Jess riding Chatina. Steve, Jess has got 14 horses entered this year's Melbourne show. So I think she's in everything bar the woodchop. Extraordinary effort. The amount of work and time. She must have a wonderful team at her disposal to be able to exhibit that amount of horses. Both show jumpers, hack, ridden every, just about every horse you could possibly think of. I think Jess might have it this year's Melbourne Royal. Now, Brett, you're a show jumper of Used to be. Um, just to give us an idea, what sort of training goes into these types of horses? How many, how many days a week would these guys be riding and what type of schooling exercises would they be doing at home? Well, it sort of starts out when they're around two years old. They're broken in and brought in and out and their training starts then. But from about four year old, they start jumping. But most people give them a day off a week, a bit like humans, they need a bit of a spell. But um, generally they do a hell of a lot of work on the flat. So flat work as in just training the paces, control, speed, moving off your leg, getting them up into your hand. So jumping, they probably only train one or two days a week with jumping at home, but most of it would be flat work. So you don't just canter a young horse down to these types of fences? Oh God, no, it's um, a lot of these horses would be around that sort of eight to 12 years old in this group. So they've had four good years of jumping under their belt before you really attempt this sort of height of jumping. And tell me, we still have a reasonable amount of uh, thoroughbreds uh, off the trackers, if you like, who go around the eventing circuit most of these horses are specific uh, bred warm blood types, would that be correct? Yeah, most, nearly all show jumpers now are, are purpose bred. There's a lot of big breeders in Australia. Uh, most of the breeding is European, so very much German breeding. So a good round there for Jess Stalling. 
clear jumping. So Jess, our third clear round, moving through to the jump off with Chitina. The next rider on course, James Lang. And this time James riding LP Nicosia. But yeah, Steve, the, the thoroughbreds were very much a mainstay in show jumping here in Australia for many years. And over the last sort of 20 years, I suppose it's uh, it's really shifted to purpose bred and using a lot of European lines. But they're finding in Europe early on the horses were a bit heavy and a bit slow, so they're actually crossing a lot of thoroughbred back through the warm bloods. And the purpose bred jumper has got a lot of blood in it. Bad luck there for James Lang, the three rails coming down at 12 jumping penalties for LP Nicosia. Brett, um, James Lang is one of our riders who is multidisciplined. He's also a very uh, established and experienced uh, three-day event rider. And in fact, he had a, uh, a horse that went around the Adelaide Five Star a couple of years ago um, and did extremely well uh, representing Australia over there in the Adelaide there's only uh, half a dozen five-star uh, three-day event in uh, three-day events in the world, and um, Adelaide hosts one. And um, James uh, cantered a horse around the uh, the five-star down there a couple of years ago. So a very accomplished rider. I think he's had a couple of starts here in the World Cup as a pure show jumper. So yes. Yeah, and that is one event. If you are an equestrian nut. If you ever get the chance, do get to Adelaide for the three day. It is one of the biggest events in the world. And it's running the parklands, basically in the middle of the city. Extraordinary to see horses galloping through the parklands with the uh, city skyscape only metres away. Oh, moving on, our next combination on course. He's a school teacher by trade. It's Adam Prime. Sorry guys, I saw that coming and uh, couldn't take my finger off the button, but bad luck there for Adam Prime. and Adam riding a saddle up blue, just a little miscommunication heading down to the double. And these poles being so light and as we spoke about earlier, the, the safety cups or the breakaway cups on the back pretty much means it's, well not impossible, but there's every precaution made with the show jumping fences that both horse and rider should be safe if they do have a mishap. And that also talks to the skills of our riders, Brett. Um, that was an extraordinary save there by Adam.
like there for Adam and to settle up Baloo. It's the second refusal and occurring elimination. So, Brett, um, how many refusals is one allowed on course? Depends on the height of the competition. So, anything under a metre 20 in height, you get three refusals. The third refusal, you're out, you're eliminated. Over a metre 20, you're only allowed the two refusals and you're out. So, on the second refusal, you're eliminated. But it's hopefully for Adam and Saddle Up Baloo, that's uh, not the normal way he rolls. And tomorrow, I think we'll see a, uh, a different combination there. And of course, fall of either horse or rider is elimination. Yeah, any fall, a horse or rider fall is elimination. Refusals, elimination. If they jump the wrong fence in the wrong order, you'll notice there's numbers on every fence. They must be jumped in that order. That'll incur elimination. Next combination on course, Incredible C is the horse and in the saddle for the second time in the event, Rebecca Jenkins. Well, a great round there for Becky Jenkins. That's her second ride in the competition and her second clear round. So four horses moving through to the jump off. So we welcome our final competitor into the arena. It's his second ride in the competition. He's a dairy farmer by trade from Denison here in Victoria in East Gippsland. And he's riding Janori DP. He did it all except for the one fence, fence number 11 coming down, Andrew Lamb and Janori DP, just the one rail down, four jumping penalties. Well Steve, the horseshoe didn't pose too many problems other than our first horse in that class, but four horses moving through to the jump off of the Colin Kelly Memorial. Now I think that's an indication um, these are our Group B horses 
which means they're the second um, highest level, if you like, in the grounds at this year's Melbourne Royal. Um, a few of them have been a little bit spooky, or if, as we call it, a little bit looky, and I think that's because we're early in the show and they've not had a good look at this new gear. And um, even though these are all very seasoned horses, uh, there's some pretty spectacular, spooky looking fences out there and the horses, I think, are acting accordingly. So as the show goes on, these horses will get more and more accustomed to the arena, the going, the surface, and of course the fences. And uh, I think the, um, the level of competition will improve dramatically, even though today's jump was, was sensational and we've got a really good jump off to look forward to. So the jump off is coming up. The jump off will be a shortened course. Our course designer, Mr. Gavin Chester and his helpers are out there. They'll raise the fences a little bit and it'll be a shortened course straight against the clock. So the horse with the least amount of penalties and the fastest time will be declared the winner. So that just means we've got a short break of uh, five minutes or so while the course is uh, altered and then we'll get the first couple of horses in for our jump off. So Steve, being a red coat and these short breaks, I know you've got to stay on high alert at all times as a red coat and uh, just be ready to jump when needed. What do you do in these short breaks? How do you, uh, how do you keep yourself entertained? You might find this hard to believe, Brett, by talking. I don't mind having a chat from time to time and the wonderful thing about this show is uh, Coming back for so many years in a row, you see people that you only see here once a year. And um, it's a wonderful opportunity to catch up with people from all around the country. And um, this is where you do catch up. So uh, more than likely you will see me on the fence having a chat to somebody that I've just bumped into that I haven't seen for 12 months. Not a lot of people know, Steve, but in your uh, normal day-to-day -day life, you're not that well liked being a work cover uh <laughs> Officer? Oh, now, well, I wouldn't say that, Brett. I would have thought that um, we're extremely well liked. We're a very important job we do. Yeah, I don't like seeing you coming past my workshop, that's for sure. I'm sure we would have only been there for advisory purposes only. No, they do do a great job, the work cover guys, but uh, yeah, there's. Uh, a lot of businesses get a little bit worried when uh, they see that badge flashed. And again, we're from the government, we're here to help. And uh, no comment. Well, the sun's come out now. I believe the, um, the gates have opened at 10 o'clock, so we should start to expect some public into the grounds. And uh, of course, all you ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, come down to the main arena here we've got some amazing show jumping in line for you today on the arena and then uh, also some spectacular harness classes moving into the afternoon program so just with the harness this afternoon steve are we uh, going to see the heavy horse the clyde sales come out today or is that tomorrow and the next day there will be some heavy horses this afternoon in what we call tradesmen and delivery classes. Um, so there will be some traditional vehicles, lorries, steel wheeled lorries, uh, Clydesdale type horses. But the real big fellas, the team of four Clydesdales will be out, I believe, tomorrow or the next day, but there will be Clydesdales here. And of course, some of the horse ex section behind the scenes is open for limited public who can come through the black gates up the top half of the horse section there and undertake a guided tour in some of our stables, which is a, a brand new, unique function to this year's Melbourne Royal. Looks like we're uh, just about ready for the jump off. If, Steve, if you could just turn around and give that bloke behind you a bit of a tap on the shoulder, walking onto our arena without a hat on. That's George, our timekeeper. Give us a wave, George. Thanks, George. Slap.
So we've got four horses for the jump off of the 2023 Colin R. Kelly Memorial. It's big time, big money here at Melbourne Royal 2023. Now Brett, um, while we're waiting for our first horse, who builds these courses and how does that happen? Well, this course, it's uh, built by Gavin Chester, but uh, Gavin's a former Olympian, World Cup finalist. He's a uh, probably one of the best course builders, I believe, in the world, but he is definitely the best here in Australia. He's, you've got to be qualified, so it's, it's a bit like any job. You, you do your apprenticeship and you come up through the levels. But these courses, Gavin designs on a computer program and basically it's the computer program they use measures the course and puts the time allowed on it. They run the wheel over it just to make sure, so the time allowed in the first round was 84 seconds and that's determined by the length and the speed that's desired or stipulated by the course builder. So generally this sort of height is 375 metres per minute. And of course it's not just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all in a straight line or all on a circle? No, there's what we call combinations, so doubles or trebles. This course had two doubles, so a double is two fences in a row, either one or two strides by the horse apart, and a stride of a horse is four yards, basically. So when you see the riders walking the course, they're stepping it out, each step is a yard. And the course designer will, of course, ask a question on what we call both reins. So the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Most definitely. And where he places the fences and the distance between fences, like the, um, I think it's the joker fence out there, or the horse head fence, that, or brown, white and blue double, down to the green fan fence. It's around from here, looks like around six strides. So that's a dedicated uh, distance that the horse will cover and get itself into the best position to jump the next fence. Yeah, and the rider needs to use their eye to, or count. A lot of riders count or use their eye to see the distance. But on course, our first combination in the jump off. She won the Alice Laidlaw Memorial yesterday. It's Angela Dobbin riding Gabrielle MVNZ. through the finish, no fences hitting the ground, 43.62 the time, Angela Dobbin clear jumping. And so a jump off of course is against the clock, so we expect these riders to go the fastest possible time with leaving all of the fences up without, as we call, having a rail. Yeah, definitely, mate. It's, um, it's what you call the money round. This is where you win prize money, and that's what these riders are after. The, the glory is one thing, but uh, the prize money, it uh, puts fuel in the tank and horse feed in the truck. And you have to qualify in the first round to be able to make the jump off. Yes, all clear rounds in the first round go through to the second round of competition. So some are second rounds against the clock, and some are called jump offs against the clock. It depends on what article class is, but Becky Jenkins on course, riding Denison Park style. Three eighty-two, the time taken, the winning time so far, 43.62, not quite quick enough for Becky Jenkins and at Denison Park style. And that's how close this competition is. So we welcome from the Oaks in New South Wales, the young lady that has 14 horses entered at this year's Royal Melbourne Show. It's Jess Stalling. 
Jess riding Chatina. The time to beat, 43.62 seconds. Put your hands together, Melbourne Royal. 41-13, new leader in the competition, Chatina, Jess Stalling. It's interesting to note, Brett, uh, the more these horses have a look at that horse, horseshoe fence, it uh, is starting to pose less and less problems. Yeah, and the, a lot of the horses we are seeing in this, this event, and especially in the jump off, are the more experienced horses that have been around a bit longer that... Don't, uh, don't take as much notice of new fences as, as the younger ones do. And as I indicated earlier, they wouldn't uh, probably have the opportunity to school that type of fence very often. Um, when we talk about schooling a horse, it's the fences we build at home to practice over. These riders will have practiced over every possible combination other than that, I would have thought. <laughs> and so. This is possibly the first time any, many of those horses will have seen that type of fence on a course such as this. Well, it's actually the first time that fence has ever been at a show in Australia. It's newly built and Horizon Show Jumps, as I said earlier, do a fantastic job and every year they want to or get a few new ones out there. So none of these horses or no other horses in the country have seen that fence. Yep, which has been evident, but uh, the quality of the horses, the more they're seeing it, the less uh, spooky it's becoming and it's just becoming another fence, which is uh, exactly what the course designer and, uh, and the gear people want to see. Definitely, and um, we always want to see good sport and that's the uh, a testament to Gavin Chester, our course designer. It's when uh, he's not, his job isn't here to make horses have faults. He builds you know, the best course possible to promote great jumping and riders and horses do enough themselves at making mistakes to have faults. Now we're just waiting for our, I believe, final horse to come out. They're having a little warm up. Uh, Becky Jenkins rode another horse earlier in the jump off and uh, she's just having a quick warm up. So, and uh, with this, Jump off, Brett, um, the heights go up a fraction? Yeah, generally most fences. Uh, the course designer will put most fences up. He might leave a fence like the horseshoe fence at the same height just because it has posed a few dramas, so he doesn't want to make it a real issue. Um, generally the first fence may only go up, you know, a hole. Some fences might go up two holes. It, it depends on numbers in the jump off and it depends on uh, how the course designer viewed the first round and how the horses went to what he does in the second round. And there's a scope in the rules in terms of how high they can go, maximum. If it's listed in the program, the first round height, it must be at that height, but then I think it's um, course builder's discretion what he does from there. Sky's the limit. Sky is the limit, especially for blokes like you and I, Steve. We just, they don't make them like us anymore. <laughs> I've reached that sky, I think. Well, Becky Jenkins, her second ride in the competition. She is sitting in third place at this stage of the competition on a previous ride. She comes out into the arena this time riding Incredible Sea. She needs to be quicker than a time of 41.13 seconds.
Well, over the last half of the time, 40.70, new leader and winner of the competition, Rebecca Allen, incredible C, 40.70. The cream definitely rises to the top. So we'll have the official results very shortly, but what a class, the Colin R. Kelly Memorial. So the official results, incredible C, Rebecca Jenkins in first place, Chatina and uh, Jess Stalling in second. Gabrielle MVNZ and Angela Dobbin in third. Fourth place, Denison Park Style, Rebecca Jenkins. In fifth place, Janori DP and Andrew Lamb. And in sixth place, Oaks Constantino and uh, Tilly Fair. But the presentation out in the Horses in Action Arena for you uh, very shortly. But Steve, another great class here at Melbourne Royal and uh, hopefully doing the Kelly family proud. Oh, absolutely, Brett. That was a delight. A delightful competition. It had a bit of everything. So um, I'm sure they'd be absolutely delighted with that. And um, at a particular note, uh, the rider who won that class is also going to be one of our judges later in the show. Yeah, she's a multi-talented young lady, Rebecca Jenkins. Her, her whole family, her mother and father, were great competitors here at the show jumping arena for many, many years. And uh, father, Robbie Allen, actually served on the committee doing the show jumping here for many years at Melbourne Royal. And I don't think uh, us Victorians have forgiven her husband, Stuart Jenkins, from taking her from Victoria and moving her up to Queensland. Oh, she comes back a fair bit, but uh, you couldn't find a better bloke for a, uh, a good girl, Stewie Jenkins. He, he's one of the real good ones. Oh, look, hard to, hard to disagree with that. But, uh, yes, yeah, so Bex, judging here next week in some of our more prestigious uh, saddle events and, uh, of course, show jumping for the first half of the show. So um, most of our equestrian athletes are incredibly talented and uh, multidisciplined. True, true. So we'll be down in the main arena very shortly. I'll just swap mics, Steve. Uh, keep everyone entertained, but none of your jokes are uh, pretty bad. I don't know about a song and dance routine either.
So we are down here in the main arena to present the Colin R. Kelly Memorial Jumping Contest. This event will be presented by Mr. Stan Fear. Now, for anyone that doesn't know Mr. Stan Fear, he's an absolute legend of show jumping here in Australia. He was a chef to keep for many years, including the Montreal Games and a former Australian speed champion. He's asked me not to interview him because he doesn't want to stuff it up. But um, it's such a pleasure to have you back again this year, Stan. You're, you're a legend. You, God, you're an old man when I was a kid and you're still an old man now, but I don't think you've aged at all. But it's great to have you here at Melbourne Royal and fantastic you've come along to present one of your old friends' uh, memorial event. But thanks for being here, Stan, and I'm sure I'm going to get a couple of words out of you. Yes, it's lovely to be here to present this at Colin Kelly. And the Kelly family you're very fond of and knew very well. That's right. I, well, they were bosses on the, of this arena for years. And I did as I was told. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, good on you, Stan. Well, a young lady you know very well and have known since she was born, please present the winner of the 2023 Colin R. Kelly Memorial, Rebecca Jenkins and Incredible C. In a second place, we had Jess Stalling and Chatina. In a third place and continuing on her good run here at Melbourne Royal, Angela Dobbin, Gabrielle, MV, NZ. In a fourth place, back up to the front of the line, it was Rebecca Jenkins again, and this time riding a Denison Park style. In a fifth place, Janori DP and Andrew Lamb. And in sixth place, we had Oaks Constantino and Tilly Fair. Well, Beck, continuing on your winning ways here at Melbourne Raw, you've been in pretty much every lineup you've been in so far in every event. But um, the Colin Kelly, your family would remember the Kelly family here at Melbourne Royal. But being presented by Stan Fear, a, a fellow we grew up admiring basically and he was one of the bosses here when we were kids but a fantastic event to win and and won it really well yeah thanks very much brett yes grew up under the leadership of stan fear and um kept us all in line and it's fabulous to see him here today representing the colin keller family and thanks again to the ras and everyone that makes this show possible uh, good on you beck fantastic to have you here well young lady that uh I think you might have the record, 14 horses you have to ride at Melbourne Show, jumping and in the hack classes, but uh, you had it, and then Beck got you, end up second. 
Yeah, I thought I'd let her have this one today. No, <laughs> no, she um, uh, well deserved. It was a very good win. Um, yeah, it's great to be out here again in the lineup today. Um, congratulations to all the competitors. A big thanks to the RAS, and yeah, it's a privilege to be in the lineup for the Colin Kelly Memorial. Uh, good on you, Jess and Ange Dolben. You haven't missed a lineup yet. You're, uh, you've had a great show, the, a win yesterday in the Alice Lade Law, and our third today in the Colin Kelly. Yeah, he's um, jumping good, must like the ground and, and the gear. So, yeah, well done to all the competitors. Well done, Beck. That was a really good round. Might have to give your husband a little lesson on how to jump that horseshoe. And, uh, <laughs> but no, well done to all riders. But please, ladies and gentlemen, give your 2023... Hang on, we're just going to get a photo before we do that. Well, give me a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Your 2023 winner of the Colin Kelly Memorial Jumping Contest, Rebecca Jenkins. Incredible seed.